New rule, next time, instead of taking a sip, chug it. <laughs> chug the whole thing. You want to connect to white voters in middle America, Mr. President? Knock that whole thing back. Turn to that guy next to you. Ask him what the fuck he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Punch him in the face, call him a fag, then order a shot and do a karaoke version of Don't Stop Believing or Riding the Mechanical Bull. That's how you connect. Mm. New rule, when posing for pictures with the queen, don't stand in front of the plant that makes it look like you have the giant foxy brown afro. <laughs> And the president should definitely not stand in front of a shrub. <laughs> New rule, someone has to tell Rupert Murdoch when he makes these gestures, he's not actually shooting evil rays from his hand. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, don't worry, you're a very bad man and you're going to pay for what you've done, but you're not actually the emperor from Star Wars. <laughs> New rule, John Boehner and Harry Reid must stop appearing together. <laughs> this doesn't look like a bipartisan approach to a complex problem. It looks like a before and after ad for embalming. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, since no one is truly happy living a lie and denying who they really are, I want to direct this rule at a certain group of people and say to them, new rule. It's time to stop fighting it and just come out of the closet. And the group I'm talking about is the American public, and the love that they're denying is their love of socialism. <laughs> now, I know that there are a few words in America more toxic than socialist, and these days, big government spending is about as popular as Casey Anthony at a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Yes, Americans say they hate socialism, but when it comes to Social Security, Medicare, unemployment, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, corporate welfare, bailouts and farm subsidies, what we really say to socialism is, I can't quit you. <laughs> Americans don't want less spending on health care. By almost two to one, they want more. Only 7% of Americans are willing to do away with either Social Security or Medicare, and even 62% of Tea Party members say those programs are worth the cost, yet 91% of them say they want smaller government with fewer services. They're like the guy who's been to prison and says, sure, I gargle with a guy's balls every once in a while, and there's nothing I love more than ass play with other men, but you know who I can't stand? Fags. <laughs> Remember this guy, the keep your government hands off my Medicare guy? He's not alone. In one survey, 40% of people who get Medicare say they have not used a government program. <laughs> really? Who do you think paid for that hip replacement? Your secret Santa? <laughs> the, uh, the actor and not very bright person, Craig T. Nelson... <laughs> once said about hitting some rough spots in his life that, quote, I've been on welfare and food stamps, but anybody help me out? No. <laughs> or take Michelle and Marcus Bachman, or as I like to think of them, America's indoor Palins. <laughs> Yes, the Bachmans, tireless advocates of cutting people off from the government tit. Well, it turns out they live on the tit. Their farm takes farm subsidies. Their counseling clinic takes Medicaid. And their mortgage was underwritten by Freddie Mac. Michelle knows civil servants are evil because she was an IRS agent. And Marcus hates government employees because sailors are so rough. <laughs> <laughs> But come on, if hypocrisy was uranium, they could power the planet. <laughs> and that's what's so hard about being a closeted lover of big government. You have to lie to yourself. But that's why I'm here tonight with a special message for all you deniers. 
it gets better. <laughs> yes, there are millions of people in the world just like you, in nice places like Switzerland and Sweden. <laughs> They enjoy high standards of living and freedom, and they're socialists. Studies show they're actually happier than we are, and that's not surprising, because the only difference between American socialism and European socialism is European socialism works. <laughs> for their tax dollars, <clears throat> for their tax dollars, Europeans get full health care coverage, a generous pension, daycare, long paid vacations, maternity leave, free college, and public transportation that doesn't smell like pee. <laughs> Whereas our tax dollars go towards military bases in Germany, subsidies to oil companies, <clears throat> building bridges to nowhere, wars, and putting half of Cheech and Chong in prison. <laughs> they get universal health care, we get a Blue Angels flyover at the Fiesta Bowl. They get paid maternity leave, we get the Octomom. <laughs> They've got Airbus, we've got the bus. Isn't there anything we still do better? Even their paranoid, racist loners look like speed skaters. <laughs> and ours look like Porky Pig. <laughs> New rule, if you don't have the good sense to avoid... <laughs> if you don't have the good sense to avoid this photo op, you can't be president. Yes, on the left, we see how Michelle Bachman makes Marcus Bachman happy. <laughs> and on the right, we see what Marcus Bachman thinks about when Michelle Bachman makes Marcus Bachman happy. <laughs> New rule, if Facebook changes again for no good reason, <laughs> it has to also change its name from Facebook to Fuckface. <laughs> No, I don't need you to combine my top stories into a news feed that tracks activities in real time. I just want to see pictures of my old girlfriends to see if they got fat. <laughs> I get to pay that ticket with a photo of me writing a check. <laughs> New rule, since the economy won't come back until we start buying stuff, and the only stuff Americans buy is either anything from Apple or guns, <laughs> Apple has to make a gun. <laughs> Call it the I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> New rule, the label on the pill bottle has to say exactly how many you need to kill yourself. On 60 Minutes, Bernie Madoff's wife, Ruth, says she and Bernie tried to kill themselves by swallowing a bunch of Ambien. May I make a suggestion? Swallow more. That you survived much. isn't a sign from God. It's a sign you need to up the dosage. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want the sister killing herself. Come on. <laughs> Every... Everyone needs to calm the fuck down. It's a comedy show. If they're not booing me, you're not booing me. Shut the fuck, everybody. Shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. It's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> New rules. You're such a bitch, Bill. You're such a bitch. <laughs> New rule, <laughs> Chanel must admit that they are officially out of ideas for new fragrances. Introducing Jersey, <laughs> an intoxicating blend of industrial runoff, Camaro exhaust, and ricotta cheese. <laughs> Jersey, the scent that asks, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> new Jersey. <laughs> new Jersey. <laughs> New rule, forget I asked, now I can see why you named your hunting dog George Bush. <laughs> I'll leave that up there for a second. <laughs> All right, and finally...
And finally, new rule, you can't have a dialogue with people who don't speak your language. On the internet this week, Al Gore presented the Climate Reality Project, a 24-hour marathon of global warming facts and figures designed to change the minds of climate skeptics. <laughs> oh, Al. It's going to take more than a PowerPoint presentation to convince Rick Perry that climate change is real. Rick Perry needs evidence, like a whale swallowing Jonah. <laughs> or Moses parting the Red Sea. You know, facts. <laughs> Which, which is why I urge the media to start referring to climate skeptics as what they really are, climate assholes. <laughs> you know, Winston Churchill once said in wartime, the truth is protected by a bodyguard of lies. In America today, Republican voters are protected by a bodyguard of duh. <laughs> a thick shell of super-hardened bullshit. A membrane so tough... The only thing that gets in is Fox News, and the only thing that comes out are misspelled signs and babies. <laughs> <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? You go home for Thanksgiving, and your uncle from Ohio is there, who you thought was normal. But soon the discussion turns to politics, and he says, that Barack Obama wants to use the UN to seize our guns and give them to his Negro army of acorn volunteers. <laughs> And you think, what? Where is he even getting this stuff? Trying to get today's Republican to accept basic facts is like trying to get your dog to take a pill. <laughs> you have to feed them the truth wrapped in a piece of bologna, hold their snout shut, and stroke their throats. <laughs> And even then, just when you think they've swallowed it, they spit it out in the linoleum. <laughs> Gore called his project 24 hours of reality, and that's the problem. Half the country doesn't believe in reality. But I guess it's unfair to accuse Republicans like this without a typical Republican voter to refute my points. So tonight, we have here in the studio, please welcome him with a nice round of applause, a typical Republican voter. His name is Bob Sprayman. He's a systems analyst from nearby Irvine, and he lives in a bubble. <laughs> Keith, you should come over here. I know you have experience talking to typical Republican oh, voters. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just give this guy a chance. Surely, if we stick to irrefutable facts, we will be able to get through to him. <laughs> For example, maybe he just never heard. Maybe he just never heard that taxes are actually at their lowest level in 50 years. Really, Bob, their lowest level in 50 years. <laughs> Under Obama, lower. I say lower. Not, not only that, uh, but, but it's a fact that uh, most of the current deficit um, is due to Bush policies and, yeah. and spending, not Obama's. Uh, here, here, here. Uh, yeah. Bob, I, Keith is talking now. I say, I say, I say Bush. Bush. <laughs> As opposed to Obama. Because Bush started wars and cut taxes at the same time. Something no one's ever tried, Bob. Bob, I'm just going to blurt it out. Reagan raised taxes. Reagan raised taxes 11 times. And tripled the debt. Social Security is solvent until... remaining a shortfall easily why we could tweak the tax code. Obamacare, Obamacare is in no way government takeover of health care. In fact, it forces people to become customers of private insurance companies. You information free bleach drinking halfwit. <laughs> The debt ceiling, Bob, is about money we already spent. Already spent. That's the debt ceiling money. <laughs> Wrestling is fake. <laughs> All right, that's 
our show. I want to thank my guests, Keith Olbermann, Rich Galen, Jennifer Donahue, Louis C.K., and Dexter Filkins. And don't forget, you can watch us now on Overtime on HBO.com. Thank you, folks.